So, Miro, the government shutdown continues. It is now officially the longest government shutdown in U.S. history, and we're entering week five. We've been talking about this since it started, but new analysis shows that it could actually be pretty tough on the economy if it drags on. Yeah, it's 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 very unfortunate. The uh, economists have kind of even the White House uh, uh, Council of Economic Advisors came in with a revised number of, of potentially that the economy can can contract by one tenth of a point of every single week. Just the salaries alone of these government employees every week are it represent over a billion dollars. So through these four weeks, four billion dollars of salaries have not been paid. There's a big multiplier effect. All these people are not going out to dinner. They're not doing. They're just focusing on the basics. But one-tenth of a point is very important because last year we had a fairly robust year, but they're projecting that the first quarter GDP for 2019 will be about 2.8% growth. For these four weeks, that takes the, the growth from 2.8 to 2.4%. That's four-tenths of a point. And, and that means we might see a contraction, not a recession, but a contraction because the contraction means that the growth rate of the economy is going to decline and it might accelerate that contraction in the second half of the year. So this is really a challenging time, especially in the context of everything else that's been going on this week uh, with respect to Brexit. The German economy isn't growing. Japan is in recession. There's a, there's a trade war with China. All these things create a lot of volatility and this just adds icing on the cake. So some changes this week with Netflix. The company has actually raised its prices for all of its plans for about one to two dollars across the board. This as more competition enters the market. Why these changes? Well, Netflix, you know, is is really competing not just in distribution of content, but in development of content. Last year, they spent $8 billion on original content, comedy specials, uh, um, one-hour shows like, like House of Cards or, or uh, Orange is the New Black, and, and recently the movie Bird Box, with over 45 million people seeing this. That's a lot of money. When they started, they were just distributing movies. So now they're competing against HBO, and they've won a lot of awards, and this has brought a lot of consumers to uh, Netflix. Over one out of every two households in the United States has Netflix. And research shows that Netflix, um, you know, people are willing to pay a lot more for Netflix than a lot of other streaming services. So there, there was a research firm called Magadan Associates, and they did a survey, and they said, people will spend about 38 bucks a month on streaming services, about, and up to six of them. So they were willing to pay about six bucks, but they're willing to make a trade-off and keep Netflix and drop something else like maybe like Hulu or Amazon or something like that. But there may be a ceiling, and that's really the question for Netflix. This, for the company, this one and two dollars is going to bring in an extra billion and a half dollars in revenues that will help offset these content costs. Wow, moving a little closer to home, uh, Westfield <coughs> UTC, starting at the end of this month, is going to, going to start to charge people to, to park. And this is actually coming at a time when a lot of malls are having a difficult time just getting people in the doors. So why would UTC risk making it more inconvenient for shoppers to come to their mall? You know, uh, great question. And, and people might say, you know, this is one of the things that really hurt Horton Plaza. When Horton Plaza instituted, uh, um, uh, you know, parking fees, that, cr that really curtailed traffic. Westfield's a little bit different. Westfield has just spent hundreds of millions of dollars on a complete revamp. They added 400,000 new square feet. They're redoing that whole end of the mall with Sears uh, to making a little tech hub. So Westfield is in a different situation. And their studies showed that 85% of consumers stay less than two hours. So that's not going to affect the vast majority of people. The people that it does affect are two, two, two types. Number one, are people who park in the mall and go to other buildings nearby that do charge for parking, so they don't want people to use them as a free lot. Also, when that trolley line gets completed, they don't want people just parking at the mall, taking a trolley to some other place, and then coming back. The people that it affects the most are employees at the mall. They're also charging the employees at the mall for parking. And right now, they're going to ask the retailers at the mall to pick up that. Or Westfield is offering a 50% off on a, on a uh, MTS pass for public transportation um, to, to, to offset the cost of, of, of parking for the employee. So it's kind of a tough thing. But overall, uh, it shouldn't have a big impact. At least it, uh, that's the way we see it. And some companies actually received some backlash after it was reported that the employees would have to pay for parking, and some have actually come out and forward and said that they will cover that cost. So that's update that's, just this morning. Mira right. Kopik, thank you so much.
Thanks, Ebony.